talking about things you can't see, but nonetheless, I personally believe are really there, and that is the afterlife and spirits and what happens to us when we cross through that door and go to another experience. And I have two experts with me, Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer. Nice to have you back with us. Thank you. And also Dr. Marjorie Willicott. Yes. Now, you're a neuroscience and rehabilitation professor, University of Oregon, for 30 years. You've been studying near-death experiences? That's right. Okay. So, so my original research was in rehabilitation science because I was a materialist at that time and thought that that sure. was all that was part of our human um, personality. And I then, feel it. It's here. <laughs> That's it. I began to meditate, and in my meditation experiences, I began to feel that there was much more, sort of like Mark was talking about yeah. earlier. And so I began to study meditation in the laboratory and then started teaching alternative and complementary medicine at the university and then began to discover people's experiences at near death, for example, the near death experiences that are so powerful. Right. I tell you, well, you're a better meditator than I am. I have to put a little <laughs> note on my book to, you know, meditate every night and then I look at it like in three weeks, go, oh, I haven't done that once. Yet. <laughs> Terrible, it's hard, that's really hard. Don't you think, do you try that? <laughs> oh, I meditate every day. Um, oh. Prayer and meditation are central to spiritual development and also to stress or relief. Yes, that's true. Okay, all right. You guys are inspiring me. I'm going to try. keep trying. Just keep trying. That's all I can say. So the near-death experience, now this is where someone is like clinically dead. dead. Exactly. So no heartbeat. The EEG, in other words, their brain activity is flatlined when they're measuring it in the hospital. Which we say, oh, they're dead. They're dead. And, and I have an interesting story about a woman that I interviewed who was an MD who was having her second child and they had complications and she had to have a C-section. And in the middle of that, her heart stopped and she left her body. She saw everything happening in the hospital room, which was verified afterwards. And when she then um, went to another realm but call, came back because someone said in that realm, you must live, she heard that she had just had a little baby girl. And then when she woke up in the recovery room with her husband, another MD, and other people around her, she said, I have to tell you three things before you talk to me. I know that my heart stopped. I know I had a little baby girl, and I know that my uterus is out. And also, I went from being an atheist to now understanding that I'm much more than that. <laughs> I think an atheist is just fear, and, and maybe they, they just don't know what form things take, which yeah. it can be confusing with, you know, yeah. organized religions or whatever. Everybody's got yeah. a different view. What's sure. what's after? What's after well, this? Well, atheism is yeah. a religion unto itself because it's a belief in nothing. And the fascinating thing is, and Marjorie's done so many studies with near-death experiences, that Nancy Evans Bush, the president emeritus of the Near Death um, uh, International Association Near-Death Studies, mm -hmm. she said that people who've had a near-death experience don't think that there's a God. They know there's a God. Yeah. Ah. That's and I myself it. have had a near-death experience when I was about really? three. My father, who was a Navy SEAL, had two of them, and my mother um, in, in an operation, mm -hmm. also flatlined on the yeah. table. And after about 40 minutes, they brought her back, and she was talking about all of her father and her uncle and her grandmother and all these people that she'd seen. So near-death experiences are real, and Marjorie is one of the scientists, one of the foremost experts in the country who will be presenting this evidence at the Spirit Symposium. Fascinating. And I, does, is this part of the brain? I know a lot of people go, oh, it's just the illusion of brain chemicals. Because so many people have these similar yeah, experiences. Exactly. So, I mean, so scientists that are skeptics would say, oh, these are just hallucinations from a dying brain. But the fact that you're actually seeing, and, and these are truthful visions of what's happening like in the operating room, you are out of your body. There is no way that scientists can explain that when your brain is actually right. no longer functioning. Something else, as Mark was saying, the consciousness Consciousness that is really sure. the true identity is the one that's now in control at that time. So is science measuring this? Are they figuring this yeah. out? They are. So there's a wonderful study that I will talk about also at the symposium where they carefully brought in everybody that had cardiac arrest to a network of hospitals and then interviewed the people, looked at their EEG, et cetera, and they showed that 11% actually had um, near-death experiences that were verifiable afterwards. In, in fact, one of our colleagues, Dr. Kenneth Ring, mm -hmm. uh, he, he actually wrote the uh, forward for my new book, Evidence of Eternity, he did a study where somebody died on an operating room table and her consciousness was hovering above the hospital and she talked about a red sneaker stuck in the uh, storm gutter at the top of the hospital when she was came out, oh uh, they gosh. revived her, she was talking about this yeah. and the doctor said, get two people up there, let's just, just check yeah. it out. And guess what? There the was red a red sneaker, sneaker was exactly where she said it was. Now, if it's a function of a dying brain, would that be in a dying brain? Yeah. 
It's impossible. It, yeah, it is impossible. Yeah. It's fascinating. I, I mean, yeah, that gives me the chills, you know, when you talk about that, that kind of a thing. Now, you've also, you've written a book in Infinite Awareness, and what's that Yes, about? Infinite Awareness, The Awakening of a Scientific Mind, and it's about being a materialist neuroscientist who then begins to have experiences in meditation that tell me it's more than that, and then starting to do the research to put those two halves of my life together and really say, how can science expand a little bit to also include these other awarenesses and experiences that people have? So it's the research and the experiences. Because if it's not if it's not verifiable to our little physical minds, and we right. think it doesn't exist, so mm -hmm. the fact that it, uh, it Einstein, as you mentioned, I mean, right. he said if you match your vibration to, to what you want, there's no way you cannot get it. This is exactly. What, what do you say? This is this is not, you know, woo woo psychology. This is actual fact. This is science. This is, this is mm -hmm. physics. Yeah, you know? physics. that's is exactly what Einstein said. And um, it, what we're seeing is that there is more to the universe than our five physical senses can perceive. NASA indicated recently that 90% of the universe is composed of dark matter, which is beyond our technology's ability to perceive. So for us to go around and say, oh, if I can't see it, I don't believe it, <laughs> Then, Pretty narrow. Yeah, Pretty you're kind of you're kind of missing the boat. <laughs> kind of like the unicorn missed the ark. I know. I, I kind of think it's it's like fear and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but but a fascinating thing in the fact that science is picking up on this and saying, okay, we cannot ignore this. There is something going on here. Again, the Spirit Symposium going on this weekend kicks off tonight, goes all through Sunday. These wonderful folks, Dr. Marjorie Willicott, thanks for joining us. Yes. Also, Mark Anthony, the Psychic Gloria, will be there with all kinds of information, data, and uh, Dr. Gary Schwartz wasn't able to visit with us today, but. He was going to tell us about a little technology that kind of proves it too. So yes. a lot of great things going on. Information on the screen. Sign up. I'm going to be there. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. Don't you go away.